Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Please welcome your neighbor to church. And if you have not seen them before, tell them it's good to see you today. Amen. I want you to be very attentive this morning because in this service, there will be healing, there will be deliverance, there will be breakthrough. Pay attention to the instructions of the Lord as the Lord will speak to you. I, I believe so. Which is why it's important that you, I will encourage you to, not an instruction, it's an encouragement, a suggestion that you write. That you write. Write until it becomes very clear to you. I found that the secret of great people is in writing. They'll keep writing until it becomes very, very clear to them. Write the vision and make it plain. Keep writing until it becomes clear to you. What you write is for yourself, not for anybody. And uh, as, of course, as we we come to the pulpit to minister to you. The choir is singing. The pastors come to minister. God will be speaking to you, not necessarily. I mean, from what God will expand what they are what they are saying in your heart, and you might just realize that what you're looking for, the answers you're trying to seek, is just in what you've written. Now, sometimes you just have to go back to your notes to find, because sometimes God has provided the answer you just did not pay attention to. Which is like, don't just write when you finish writing. Go back to, to your note. I think this is part five, actually, but I think it's actually part seven because I've taken two classes during the midweek service. So if you've missed any of that, eh? No, it's five, it's seven, actually. <laughs> it's seven. But Part five for a Sunday service, but the other two parts, uh, that, that, the class was during the midweek service on Tuesday, so I will encourage you not to miss the midweek service. Carrie Sangal is back, and uh, it's been an awesome time. It's been an awesome, awesome time, I beg your pardon. So today, uh, part five, I think we have two more classes to go on honor. Maybe this is going to be my longest series. The one that is close to this is Living in the Goodness of God, which, by the way, um, the book will soon be in print. <laughs> I've been at it for over three years now. Hopefully I finish by the end of the year. Just pray for me. I hope you will, you will do that. So, in Luke chapter 4, verse 8, Jesus quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 13. In Luke chapter 4, verse 8, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. And he said to the devil, And Jesus also said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Let's leave the devil out of this matter now. <laughs> for it is written, so I'm speaking to you now. It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. This is actually Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. That was God's instruction to his people. God's instruction to you and I. God had commanded us to worship him and to serve him. 
The reality is that no man should be worshipped. No man should be worshipped. No man should be worshipped. We are not to worship any human being on earth. We are not to worship any other God, small God. But we are to worship God, Jehovah, the Almighty, and serve him alone. However, the Bible instructs us to honor. Honor is the code that every believer should live by. I do not need to begin to define what honor is to you. But just as a reminder, honor is to esteem, is to find value in order, is to have respect for other people. And the Bible made it so clear that uh, you should honor all men. All everybody is deserving of your honor. You should find value. You should find, you should esteem another person. Esteem your brother in the church. Esteem your sister in the church. The Bible instructed us to honor our father, our parent. That our days might be long and that all may go well with us. The Bible instructed us to honor those in authority. The Bible instructs us to honor those who has placed above us in our places or different places of work. And also the Bible instructed us to, to honor our spiritual leaders, our pastors. So this morning, our subject of this course is particularly on honoring our spiritual leaders. And I'm going to lay emphasis particularly on your pastor or your pastors. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One of the ways or primarily how we fear God is to obey what he has said in his word. And so if the Bible had instructed us to, to obey, to honor, so we fear God by obeying what he has said. So if you do not obey what he has said in the scriptures, in other words, you, are, you don't have the fear of God in your heart. The fear of God is to respect the authority set up. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 to 41, Matthew 10, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew 10. Media. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. The Bible didn't say here that it is the prophet that is going to reward you for receiving him. All right? He's saying that the same reward that it is due to the prophet is also due to you because you have received the one that I have sent. Now, by the way, know that the efficiency, the matter of efficiency, uh, I think Ephesians chapter 4, and when he has sent it, he gave gift of to men, to some prophet, to some teachers, to some apostles, to some... It's not even, so when the prophet here is all encompassing, talking about servants of God, the one God has sent. He who receives a prophet, in the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet reward. So that you have received your pastor, that you have esteemed your pastor, that you have honored your pastor, means that you are going to also get the same reward that the pastor will be given. I come quickly and my reward is with me to give each and every one of you according to your works. My reward, your, the reward, the reward for your honor, for honoring your spiritual leaders is not with your spiritual leaders. It is with God. That you have served in obeying what he has said. 
The reward that you receive for honoring your pastor, your spiritual leader, is not with the church. It's with God. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. However, before we proceed, I must warn against a spiritual sorry. I'm, I'm trying to find a word. Yeah. When, don't, when someone is not settled in a place, I actually have a word written down, but I don't think I want to use that word. But let me just tell you the scriptures. Proverbs 92, verse 13. They that are planted in the court of our God shall flourish. They that are planted in the court of our God shall flourish. Proverbs 92 verse 13. I'm waiting for it. Ninety-two. I beg your pardon. Psalm 92 verse 13. Forgive me. <laughs> they that are planted in the court of our God, those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those who are planted where? Where? In the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. You know, it's quite easy this day for a believer to start behaving like a local fowl. Eating everywhere. We are bombarded with too much, too much information. Some good, some not good. All kinds of preaching. Growing up, we had fowl in the house, local ones. In fact, the ones that are supposed to be hybrid, because they are not very popular, we put them together. And you suddenly see them behaving the same way. Don't eat spiritual meal anyhow. Do you know that local fowl, they usually don't grow big? They are usually stunted. Because they go everywhere. No matter what you give to them, they don't yield. They don't yield flesh. They go. Have you seen the local fowl before? Eh? They eat all manner of things, including stone. I've killed quite a few. And when you open them up, you say stone, you wonder where how can stone I mean that means the stone look like a foot to them. God really wants us to be planted. Don't go everywhere. Settle in your mind with settle in prayer where you want God to want you to be. Settle that. Don't be compelled. Settle it in prayer. Is this where you want me to be? Yeah, okay. I'm going to settle here. I remember when I think that was about 2010, 11, I went to a couple of places seeking a spiritual house where I would be planted because God had given me certain instructions that was going to happen later. As I was very particular. 
I knew I was going to be a pastor as far back as 2010. And so when I finished service, I, I was seeking in prayer where I will worship. Where my, I, I wasn't married at that time, but I just knew that I needed to settle that. I went to different places. I finally, I settled in the church. I began, I enrolled for their program. And uh, I got married. My wife joined me in the church. We, we were very active in the fellowship. Very active. We go to the, to, the, to the house fellowship every Sunday. And we had our first son. And the Lord told me, between the time he was born and the time he was dedicated, that your time in this place is up. Go to another place. Go to Fountain of Life Church. So we find us at... Um, John was, was named by another pastor from another church and he was dedicated in Fountain. And we have been there ever since. I remember in particular year the Lord told me that your duty, your assignment this year is to pray for, for your pastor and his family. I was, not a, I was not a pastor. I was not even serving in any, in any, in any, in any capacity at that time for a whole year. It was so, it was such a seal that I had to, you know, settle that in prayer. Don't let me just waste time on that, on that but I'm, I'm sure you get the message. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 8. Proverbs 28, 27 verse 8. Proverbs 27 verse 8. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from what? A number of people have become spiritual wanderers. They are just wandering because they are not planted anywhere. And so when a bird wandered from its nest, there won't be comfort. There'll be a lot of struggle. Like a bird that wanders from, from its nest. Nest provides safety, comfort. Within the nest there is provision. So when a man wandered his, wander away from his place, a, a, a spiritual place, his spiritual house, he's just like a bird that wandered away from his nest. Get planted and get settled. Tell your neighbor, get planted. Where you are planted is where you are instructed. Where you are instructed is where you are corrected and rebuked. Where you are planted is where you serve. And where you are planted is where you honor. You cannot serve in a place that you don't honor. And if you don't honor, your service cannot be right. Amen? Amen? Now, talking about honoring your spiritual leaders. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, I, and, and, I, and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and hover you in the Lord. And admonish you, verse 13, and to esteem them very, what? Talk to me. Why is the church so cold? Abraham, blessings are mine. Abraham, blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed. Abraham blessings. Victory, victory. Hallelujah. 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 Victory, victory. Jesus conquered the 
I think I, I think we have to maybe turn off the AC. It's just too cold. Should we do that? So let's read. Thessalonians 5.12. 1 Thessalonians 5.12. And I urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord. Over you in the Lord. And admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace amongst yourselves. One of the ways to honor your spiritual leaders is to esteem them. In fact, the Bible says, think highly. Give me the, 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 the NLT, please. NLT. Glory be to God. Show them great respect. Uh, verse 13. Verse 12. 12. Let's start from 12. Their brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. So we are all doing the Lord's work, but you have leaders. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect, all utterly. Show them great respect and all uttered love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Just the Bible says, as much as it is, as much as it is upon you, be at peace with all men. Be at peace with all men. Show them great respect. The version says, think highly of them. I think maybe NIV or something. Think highly of them. I started by letting you know that the Bible didn't say you should worship them. That's why I began from where I started from. But the Bible says, think highly of them. Have great respect and honor for them because they are doing the Lord's work. You see, in Mark chapter 6, verse 5, Mark chapter 6, in fact, from verse 1, I, I, I gave that reference at the beginning of this series, and I remember I said to you, uh, uh, of course, the story of Jesus. I'm just going to add two more scriptures to this just to, you know, enlarge your word bank in, in that regard. This was the story of Jesus. And then, and, and then he went out from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Shabbat had come, he began to teach in the synagogues. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? So there, were, there was an acknowledgement of mighty works. It, now look at their problem. Is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary? and brother of James and Joseph, Judas and Simeon, and are not his sisters here with us. So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he couldn't do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on few sick people and healed them. One of the things that I pray is that the greatest beneficiary of the grace and the deposit of God upon my life will be amongst the people that we are called to pastor, not outsiders. But the key to, to this is in honor. You cannot benefit from what from, from a grace that you, have, that you have not honored. It's absolute. It's the scripture. This is true. And so you see Jesus' brothers in John chapter 5, verse 7. You know, Jesus spoke about his relatives there, right? Let's look at the reference for that. John 7. John chapter 7. 
Let's start from verse 1. After this thing, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now Jews, now the Jews' feast of Tabernacle was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea that, you, that your disciples also may see the work that you are doing. Now, what a good advice. You know, some of us, we don't like to do things secretly. Everybody must know. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. That's a good advice, isn't it? Like you're a great miracle worker. People should know you're the one doing this miracle. Because the truth is there are some roles within the church that people wouldn't know that you are doing anything. If you do these things, you yourself, show yourself to the world. You think they were speaking with love in their heart or with regard and respect with their brother, Jesus. But their heart will soon be exposed. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Yet they were giving him advice. Be careful, the people you are listening to. I, I mean, you should think that they, are, they, are, they, they had Jesus' interest at heart. But obviously... They didn't believe in Jesus. Next verse. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. Jesus could design their hearts. You see, the greatest gift you should, one of the, let me rephrase that, one of the gifts that you must have is the gift of discernment. And that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because there will be an inner witness that will always tell you that, see, what, you are, what you've just heard right now is not, is not what you should do. Don't listen to that advice. It looks good, but the end might not be correct. It's not my plans for you. Amen. The Bible admonished us that we should give double honor to our spiritual leaders. And interestingly, this is the only place in the scripture that talked about that talked about double honor. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Let the elders who rule well, the condition there. Let elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the world and doctrine. So, who then is marking the script of an elder that is ruling well? Absolutely, it's dangerous to follow anyone that is not accountable to anybody. It is not to the to the, I'll, I'll come to that shortly. Let the elders, of course, talking about pastors here, because when you talk about the, the word elder, the word I've said this many times, elder, bishop, uh, pastor, they all have the same Greek meaning. Uh, um, it means they all mean the same thing. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and in doctrine. So, how do we give double honor? In fact, how do you know you are even honoring your pastors at all? I asked some rhetorical questions this morning. Do you show up late for meetings?
Do you sit among those who, 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 who begins to judge what is considered in your own estimate or understanding how pastor should have done things or how he should not have done things? That's a litmus check to know. I actually wrote some things down here. You know. When the pastor teaches, are you having a sideline conversation? Little things. Subtle, right? But they are very dishonoring. Do you even show up for meetings? Especially the impromptu ones. And if you're not going to show up at all, is there a notice given to say, I'm sorry, I won't be sure because of this and this? Or rather, you resort to saying, why, why does he not think that I have other things to do? Subtle, right? But very dishonoring. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the world and in doctrine. Very early, as a Christian, I, I, be, I God, Holy Spirit ministered to me that you also know that your, your pastors, the people that, you, that are authority over you, have their personal struggles too. Do you know that you owe them the duty of prayer? Amen. Why is everybody quiet this morning? I don't like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now afraid. Amen. Mm. Mm. Do not pass judgment over your spiritual leader. Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Romans 14, verse 4. Do not pass judgment over your spiritual leader. See, this, is, this might be a breakthrough for someone this morning. At least maybe for me. Because it was a breakthrough for me when I came across the scriptures. And each time I read it, it's a breakthrough for me. Let's read this together. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands... Or false. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. You did not call your pastor. You have God did not give you the permission to call any spiritual leader. And so it is safe for you and I to stay away from. Criticism. The Bible is clear, very clear. I mean, everybody can understand this English. Give me the message version. You, who are you to judge? Who are you to judge? Who are you to judge? The one that is marking the script is waiting and watching. And in due time and in due season, he gives everybody their reward. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. Glory be to God. Don't try to help God. Why don't you learn to carry your cross daily? And pray for your spiritual leaders. It's a scripture, right? James chapter 4, verse 12. James 4, 12. James 4, verse 12. God, God is what? Let's read this together. Who do you think you are to make in, in what? Who do you think you are 
to meddle in the destiny of others. Give me the NIV. Sorry about that. There is only one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Talking about your neighbor. You're just... And I, and I think this will really help all of us. It will really help us. Christianity, we have, to, we have to change. Do you realize that we, con- we criticize our, our own the most? Is that correct? Go and find out, go and find out about people who speak derogatory things about fathers of faith, they are Christians. You see a believer doing something that is worthy of emulation, that is exemplary, will be criticizing that person. A believer is just maybe championing a cause, doing something different, maybe she or she, she, she's doing great. With her work. That's when we begin to see, why is she, why is she always wearing red gogo? Why is that frame always red? Have you not noticed? Why is she always wearing black? And then they begin to put videos together. Before she got here, she wasn't wearing black. Now that she has had, God has elevated her, she's always wearing black. I don't, don't you think we should investigate it? What are you investigating? When the person was, God was just trying to climb up, to up the ladder in our office, nobody knew our struggles. Why is she always wearing tight clothes? Or do you think she's always doing, or he's always doing hand like this? Christians, though. There's a scripture that God revealed to me, ministered to me last two nights ago, and I think I've shared it with all of you. In, Reve- in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, I think. And explaining to me what the blood of Jesus had come to do for me washes my sin, solves my sin problem. But much more than that is that he has made me a kingdom and a priest. Maybe we should take a series on priest, priesthood and kingdom or kings and priests or something. Maybe. So we know that we have work to do. They are signaling to my time is up. All right, let me finish. Can I finish? Should I finish? Yes, Are you having a great time? Yes, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know how to... It comes once in a while. But I don't know how to preach you happy. I'm, I'm sorry. I hope you will accept me like that. I've come to accept myself. I'm not very... I can do it once in a while if the Spirit permits me. But just follow me as I'm just enjoying you and you're enjoying me and we're all enjoying God. Amen. Amen. Maybe as I grow older in this work, I will learn it. We talked about show great respect, right? Don't make them sad. Don't make your spiritual leaders sad. Don't make people leading you sad. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17.
Hebrews 13 verse 17 very quickly. You're helping you. You know, they told me my time is up. They would deduct all the time that you have. This scripture talks about that we should not make the work of those who are serving, who are laboring over us to be difficult. Are we there? Two minutes. I need to find out why this thing doesn't come up on time. But is anybody at Hebrews 13 verse 17 very quickly? Just, you can read it out for us from the audience. Hebrews 13 verse 17, yeah. Thank you, they are there. Clap for them. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be what? Will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be of no advantage to you. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. It will be a joy to you not to be a burden to them. Don't let them drag you along. Obey your leaders. Submit to the authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. This is one ministry class. I go on and show you the responsibilities of a spiritual leader. Or the truth is that God as a, God is not in the place of anybody to be a lord over any church because nobody died for the redemption of the church except for Jesus. And so the Bible is clear about it. And if you know this as a pastor, you will not cross the line. The Bible says, do not lord your opinion over them. Don't be a lord. Don't be a lord over them. Jesus is the lord of all. Acts 20, 23, I think, tells us that Jesus redeemed the church with his blood. My blood didn't redeem anybody. I could not even redeem myself. But this is not ministry class, so I don't need to go into all of that. But this is it. Obey your leaders and submit to their authority for they keep watch over you. Over you. There is a place in the scripture where God rebuke a he, he rebuke. He said, I rebuke you because you sleep too much. You're supposed to keep watch over my church, keep watch over my flock. You have, you have slept off snoring. Obey your leaders, submit to the authority. They keep watch over you as, as men who must give an account. As men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. That, that, will, that will be a joy to you. For that will be no advantage to you. So if you make the work difficult, it is of no advantage to you. Will they survive? Will they succeed? Yes. There are other things I would like to say, but of course the Bible admonished us, and, I'm, and this is particular to every leader in the church, and of course to me as well. John chapter 5, verse 41. Uh, I told you this on ministry class, but let me just share this. Don't seek honor of men. You're not supposed to seek honor. You just do what you're supposed to do. Teach as you're supposed to teach. They don't seek. I do not accept praise from men. Don't seek honor. Honor is not what you demand for. But we have to teach it so that you will understand what your responsibilities should be. Um, and then third John chapter 5 verse 8 tells us about how we must treat people who are invited to be a blessing to us. Guest ministers. Maybe we have guest ministers, we have a guest preacher. How should we treat them at the church? Because the truth is that when we honor them, we receive more from them. We receive more from them. Uh, John, third John, 
5, 8. And that's where I'm going to end today. We have therefore to show hospitality to such men so that we may work together for the truth. We are expected to be warm, loving, receive them with grace and with honor so that we can be a beneficiary of God's gift over their lives. Like I said to you earlier, what you honor is what becomes a blessing to you. Who you honor from such person, you are blessed. Do not forget, the Bible tells you, you, you and I, including myself, that we must honor, give double honor to our spiritual leaders. Do not forget that. It is not much, it is not so much of the man of God, but particularly of the God who called him. So when you honor, your reward is not with the person that you have honored, but for the one who has said, whosoever accepts a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whosoever accept a righteous man will also receive a righteous man's reward. Revelation says, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give each and every one of us according to our works. And so someone might want to ask, but are you saying that it's only when Jesus comes that I will receive my reward? Absolutely no. That's not what I'm saying. Because Jesus disciples ask him that, ah, we have served you all our lives. I mean, for the past years we've been following you. Who what shall be our reward? Jesus said, There is no one who abandoned all and follow me that will not have reward here on earth and also in heaven. Don't forget that God has made you and I a king to reign here on earth. So there is a reward for obeying God's instruction, even as you have life within you on earth. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless his word in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord enlarge your capacity to love to be at peace, to esteem each other in honor and in high regard. The Lord give you the capacity to honor your pastors in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to continually shine upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and God bless